Greetings everyone and welcome back to Inside EVs. This week I'm driving the Volkswagen ID.4's Czech cousin, the Skoda Enyaq, a vehicle that uses the same ingredients as the VW, but it uses them very differently and the resulting vehicle is uh, quite different in feel. It's also a bit bigger. Let me show you around it before this rain gets really, really bad. Now, unlike VW, that went for a more futuristic design approach, the ENIAC looks just like any other Skoda. It even has a big grille, which is completely covered. As you can see, no air goes through here, although there is some air that goes through there. It has these uh, quite bold design elements on the bumper. That vent over there is also real. It has full LED matrix headlights, matrix LEDs. This is the Skoda badge, in case you've not seen it or heard of it. It's a historic European manufacturer based in the Czech Republic that's now owned and is a subsidiary of Volkswagen. It's quite a big SUV with a very big wheelbase. And it doesn't really look like the ID4 now, does it? My tester is a top of the range example that rides on uh, pretty big 21 inch wheels that are staggered. You have, uh, where is it? 235s on the front and they should be wider at the back and they are 255s. This vehicle is about seven centimeters longer than the ID4. And I'm pretty sure it's all rear overhang. It's got some snazzy looking rear lights here, full LEDs, and you can even configure them you to have various animations, different animations. This is how you spell ENIAC with a Q. All of Skoda's uh, high riding vehicles, it's SUVs and crossovers, um, get a Q at the end. Kind of a weird name, but we're gonna get used to it. And the, actually the pronunciation for the brand name is actually Skoda because it has this little thing on top of the S and that's how you pronounce it in Czech. It's Škoda, but I don't think many people outside the Czech Republic or Czechia as the country is now known pronounce it properly. So I'm not going to bother. It's also called the IV, so it's called the ENIAC IV80. Uh, IV is just a fancy word for uh, Skoda's uh, electric range of vehicles and the 80 announces that this has the biggest battery pack available for this car. It's exactly the same uh, 82 kilowatt hour capacity battery whose usable capacity is uh, 77 kilowatt hours. In the real world, it will probably take you some 400, 420 kilometers. When I got this car from Skoda, it was fully charged all the way to 100% and it had a range of 456. Now, even though this car is a dedicated electric vehicle, there is no frunk. You have washer fluid and um, controllers, I guess, for the battery and the electric drive system. Perhaps with the next generation of dedicated EVs, the VW Group will find room for a frunk. What do you think of the design? Do you think it's better looking than the ID4? It's certainly less futuristic, I guess, but it's not necessarily a bad design. It has some bold and daring uh, lines and it's a more angular looking thing. This vehicle also has a pretty big trunk, which you can open by waving your foot underneath the bumper. Let's see if it works. These systems never really work, do they? And I'm sure I'm not doing it wrong. Okay, I'll just use the button then. So this is 570 liters. I'll put what that is in cubic feet on screen. And it extends to over 1700 liters if you fold everything. And you can do that fairly easily. Skoda is known for being a very practical automaker, or practically minded automaker. So you have some tethering hooks here. You pull on this to, um, to fold the seats. 
there's also one on the other side. And you have these very nifty things that have Velcro on this side and you can just like put them wherever you want. There's another one here. And then they will keep your stuff from sliding around the trunk when you drive the car. Like this. And this will... Okay, I didn't put them properly, but you get the idea. This is a very typical Skoda touch. Many Skoda vehicles also have an ice scraper that doubles as a magnifying glass. And you would normally find it under the fuel filler door. But in the ENIAC, they put it here. The problem is somebody who uh, drove this car before me or someone else stole it. It's no longer there. You also get quite powerful LED lights that illuminate the trunk at night. There's two of them. That's pretty good. And you also get these elastic nets here. And there are some points where you can hook those. This car also has the optional tow hitch. So you pull on this little switch here and then it pops out of uh, underneath the bumper. And then you pull it into place. And then you press on this or you pull on it rather again. And you just click it into place underneath the bumper. Okay, it's really starting to rain. Which is a nice segue to the fact that this vehicle has an umbrella in the door. See, it's branded. Okay, let's go inside. So from the driver's seat, you get a very small, I think it's a 5-inch screen, and a massive 13-inch screen that runs basically the same infotainment software as the ID4, but it has a different skin. It works very well. It sometimes snags a little bit, but it's not bad. It's not as bad as some people make it out to be. As you can imagine, you can access all of the functions through this screen. There is a row of toggle switches here. Actually, they're not toggle switches. They just look like toggle switches. They're just buttons. This car also has adaptive dampers. You know this whenever you see the comfort mode with the little cloud icon. That means your vehicle has um, adaptive dampers. My tester, being a very well spec example, gets these very pretty cognac leather seats. They're brownish cognac color. The leather finish also extends um, onto the dash. In lower grade models, um, this nice soft leather is replaced by a fabric, the same fabric you would get on the seats. The cup holder is configurable. Let me see if I can show you. So you can move this piece and make one of them bigger than the other. And they also have those little things on the bottom so you can essentially open a bottle with one hand if you have it there. The gear selector is kind of amusing. It's a dinky little thing. I'm not sure I uh, like it that much. I honestly prefer what uh, VW did with the selector here behind the wheel, like somewhere here. That's similar to the BMW i3. The steering wheel is also quite an interesting design. This is the sport steering wheel that gets a third spoke and a flat bottom. But these buttons here are quite nice. This is volume and you mute everything by pressing on it. It's pretty cool. The door handles are very nicely integrated. They are very sculptural looking. This is another Skoda trait. This car also has an augmented reality head-up display. Right now it's uh, not augmented, but it's there. It shows you navigation information as well as information from the safety systems in this car, installed in this car. Space in the back is also excellent. You get a lot of knee room, head room, leg room, shoulder room, every kind of conceivable room. It's pretty good. In fact, I'm going to jump in the back real quick. So this is me sitting behind myself. Ample knee room. I can slide my feet underneath the front seat. This makes longer journeys extra comfy. You have these uh, privacy blinds here that you can 
pull up manually. There's also an armrest with cup holders. And yeah, this is what the interior looks like. I think it's quite nice. In this uh, spec, this is uh, the top of the range model. Uh, it costs 61,000 euros. I will now drive the vehicle and tell you a little bit more about how it feels on the road and how it's different to the ID4. Just like the VW ID4, the ENIAC makes the start stop button redundant. You just uh, climb aboard the car, put your foot on the brake, put it into drive, and away you go. Just like the ID4, it is also ridiculously maneuverable. The wheels turn to an almost comical amount, making the car feel even smaller. It is also supremely refined and comfortable. I was really, really impressed by this. Although my previous ID4 tester did not have the adaptive dampers that this ENIAC has. It also has double glazing on uh, the front windows and it's just really, really quiet and a really, really pleasant place to spend time. What really struck me about this vehicle and um, I am comparing it to the um, ID4 is uh, just how uh, premium it feels inside, to be honest. Especially with this leather interior, the electric uh, driver's seat with memory function, and the only place where a nasty plastic really stands out is on these door handles um, that are the same for the front and the rear. Just like the ID4, this car has a single rear mounted electric motor, or for now, because both will get uh, all wheel drive versions. But for now, this is the most uh, powerful one you can order, at least here. It has a uh, 204 horsepower output and 310 Newton meters. It sprints to 100 kilometers per hour from standstill in 8.5 seconds and it tops out at 99 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour. It is definitely a very, very pleasant car to drive or crossover or whatever it is because it doesn't really have any significant ground clearance. You couldn't go off-roading in this, especially in this rear-wheel drive model. You can charge the ENIAC at up to 125 kilowatts, although in order to have access to this uh, charging speed, you need to pay extra. As standard, I think it's uh, 60 kilowatts. Just like the ID4, uh, regenerative braking is uh, done automatically. The car senses what is in front of you and uh, cranks up the region if it senses there's a vehicle in front of you and it knows you're about to come to a stop. You can put it in B mode for max regen all the time or you can adjust the three levels of regen with the paddles behind the steering wheel. And I honestly think that this ENIAC is a better buy than the VW. It's ever so slightly cheaper to buy, not by much, but it's a more practical vehicle with a larger trunk, the same amazing space for passengers inside, a better designed interior, I think, aside from the transmission selector. And in this uh, top of the range, guys, it's a quite a luxurious feeling thing, to be honest. I didn't have any expectations of this vehicle. I'm not a fan of Skoda. I, I don't dislike the brand, but I, I have neither a negative nor a positive view of it. But I have to say this vehicle has impressed me. I know the Inside EVs channel from the US has a predominantly US based audience. But what do you think? Would you consider this vehicle if it was sold in the US? Uh, would you buy it over an ID4? Considering the fact that it's a bit cheaper to buy and it's essentially the same vehicle underneath. And it's not necessarily cheaper feeling. It's just a different approach. Let us know in the comments. This concludes my time with the Skoda ENIAC. I thank you so much for watching this video until the end. Please subscribe to the Inside EVs channel. And I'll see you again in the next uh, Euro EV or PHEV review. Take care.